this evening. Oh, yeah. So like I said, I wanted to start off doing kind of a quick review of the notes from yesterday because these chemical reactions are going to play a big role in the equations, the chemical, the balancing chemical equation stuff that we're going to be doing today. So yesterday was all about, chem or Tuesday, excuse me, all about chemical reactions or how different chemicals interact with each other when they're combined and what some of the outcomes of those reactions are. So we talked a whole bunch about the different signs that a chemical reaction is happening. So if you're trying to figure out if you have a chemical reaction going on with your substances, one of the things that you can look for is a new gas appearing in the form of bubbles, a new solid appearing in your solution that was not there before, a brand new color showing up, temperature getting hotter or colder, light being given off. So in those combustion reactions, like when you set stuff on fire, the fire produces light that we can see by. And so that is a sign that a chemical reaction is happening. Or something like a change in smell or taste uh, we talked a lot yesterday, Tuesday, about things like fruit, so like bananas will go from green to yellow to brown as they ripen, and their taste will go from kind of starchy to nice and sweet and delicious to kind of overly sugarly sweet and kind of mushy and gross tasting. All of that is because of chemical reactions happening inside of the banana that's turning those starch chemicals into sugar chemicals. So in chemical reactions, we have these original substances and our new substances. So it's all about changing. In order for a chemical reaction to happen, you have to end up with something that's different from what you started with. So the terminology that we like to use for these examples for chemical reactions is that our starting substances are called our reactants. So these are the things that are combining together, that are reacting with each other in order to create our products. And so the products are our ending substances, the atoms and molecules and chemicals and compounds that are produced at the end of the reaction. So the reactants react together to get the chemical reaction going. The products are what are produced at the end of our chemical reaction. So we looked at our photosynthesis reaction where we had carbon dioxide and water. Those were our reactants, our starting materials, and they end up as glucose, which is a type of sugar, and oxygen. So these are our ending materials. These are our products. So we start off with one set of substances and with a different set of substances. That's how we know that a chemical reaction is going on. We also found that in a chemical reaction, we can't create or destroy any atoms. We can only rearrange the atoms that we already have there. So like for example, on the reactant side, our atoms are C and O and H, and we already said O. And then we have to have the same, the exact same set of atoms on the product side, C, O, and H. So we didn't add in anything new or take away anything from the reactants. We just rearranged the atoms that we already have into new configurations, which gives us new substances. 
So the other major thing that we talked about yesterday was exothermic. Dang it, I keep saying yesterday, but I mean Tuesday. I should just start saying last class. That works a little bit easier. The other major thing we talked about last class was exothermic reactions and endothermic reactions. So exothermic reactions are reactions where energy is being released from the reaction. It's going out into the environment, usually causing the temperature to go up because that energy is a lot of times being given off as heat. So as the outside environment absorbs that energy, it gets hotter. So things like decomposing stuff or burning fuel and a combustion reaction, that's going to give off a lot of heat. And in the case of combustion specifically, light as well. So heat and light are being given off. They're being released by our exothermic reactions. On the opposite side of that are what are called endo thermic reactions. This is where we absorb energy, usually in order to build up larger chemical structures. So if we're going to make a whole bunch of new chemical bonds, we need energy in order for that to happen. So we can absorb energy from the surrounding area. So for the photosynthesis reaction, for example, that we were looking at earlier, we are absorbing sunlight in order to make that sugar and that oxygen. So the sun is providing the energy in the form of light, and then the plant is absorbing that light and using the energy from the light in order to create large structures of glucose, of sugar, essentially. And then that is what the plant is going to use for food when it needs to get its own energy later on. So exothermic is energy being released out into the environment. Endothermic is energy being absorbed by the reaction. All right, so that's sort of a brief overview of the stuff that we covered yesterday. Um, anybody have any questions, anything that you want me to go back and touch on really quick about the chemical reaction notes? Fernando, did that cover everything pretty okay for you? Uh, yes, sir. I uh, just took the notes. All right. Awesome. All right. Thank you. No problem. So those are our chemical reactions. And one thing about chemical reactions, like I mentioned, we have to make sure that we have the same types of atoms on either side of the reaction. But what that also means is that we also have to make sure that we have the same amount of atoms on either side of the reaction. So that is where this balancing chemical equations part comes in. So balancing chemical equations means making sure that in our chemical reaction, we have the correct number of each type of atom on each side of the equation. So again, this is just a little bit more review. Hold on, where's my, there we go. So we have on one side of our equation, our reactants, which are the chemicals that are reacting together at the start of the reaction. And then on the other side of our equation, we have our products or the substances that are produced at the end of the reaction. So we start with our reactants and we end with our products. So again, in our little uh, photosynthesis equation here that we were looking at just a second ago, in the reaction, we have some carbon dioxide and some water. And in the products, we have glucose and oxygen. The labels got a little bit mixed up down here. But this big guy, this C6H12O6, that's glucose. And this guy over here is our oxygen. So now that we're going to go a little bit more into detail about balancing these equations, 
I want you to notice that it's not just a random number of carbon dioxides and water that are combining together. In order for this specific reaction to happen, we need six carbon dioxide molecules and six water molecules. We use the energy from the sunlight and from those six carbon dioxide and six water molecules, we end up with one big glucose molecule and six oxygen molecules. How do we know that we need six of each of these things? Why is it that we only have the one glucose molecule? That is what we're gonna be talking about today, is how to figure out precisely how many of each chemical that we need in both the reactants and in the products. So chemical reactions can also be called chemical equations where we use these symbols and these chemical formulas in order to kind of write out the process of the reaction. So you notice that instead of having it being written out as carbon dioxide, we use the chemical symbols that we get from the periodic table. So we have a C and two O's, and that makes up our carbon dioxide. And then over here in our water, we have two H's and one O, and that's what makes up our water molecule. So we add these together, and we end up with a new set of chemicals. So besides the actual chemical symbols themselves, there are two other things to look at in our chemical equations. There is the big number that is at the front of our chemicals and the little number that's down at the bottom by some of our atoms. So that big number is called the coefficient. So these guys right here from, so here's our photosynthesis equation again. These big numbers in the six in front of the CO2, this six in front of the H2O, and this six in front of the O2, they are called coefficients. So a coefficient is how many of each substance that we have. So for example, in our photosynthesis equation, this is telling us that we have six carbon dioxide molecules and six water molecules, and they're combining together to make one single glucose molecule and six oxygen molecules. So these big numbers here are called coefficients. So these guys are going to be really, really, really important when it comes to actually going in and balancing our chemical equation. So coefficients are these big guys right here. The little numbers down here are called subscripts. They essentially just tell us in a specific molecule in a specific compound, how many of each type of atom do we have? So for example, over here, it's tell this little two subscript is telling us that in a carbon dioxide compound, we have one carbon and two oxygen molecule atoms, excuse me. In a molecule of water, we have two hydrogens and just the one oxygen. And our oxygen molecules over here, they're made up of two oxygen atoms that are covalently bonded together. And then our glucose molecule right here, this really big guy, is made out of six carbons, 12 hydrogens, and six oxygens. So that's just what these little numbers down here represent. They're called subscripts and they represent how many atoms are in a particular 
compound. Everybody feel okay so far? Anybody have any questions about the coefficients or the subscripts? I have a question, but I don't know if I if I can ask it now. It's about the, the work that we have to do for today. Mm -hmm. um, hold on to it. We might get to a qu your answer to it in a little bit here. Okay. So yeah, like I said at the beginning of class, I'm hoping that we'll have some time after we go through the notes today to talk about a bunch of the homework questions and kind of work our way through them together. All right, so coefficient, big number in our chemical equation, subscripts are little numbers. So a lot of times when scientists first figure out how a certain chemical reaction happens, they know the atoms that are involved in a chemical reaction, but they do not know exactly how many of each are reacting together. That's where the idea of balancing our chemical equations comes in. So our whole goal is that we can change the coefficients in the chemical reaction. So those big numbers at the beginning of it those were allowed to change. We can make them bigger numbers or smaller numbers in order to try and make it so that we have the same number of each type of atom in both the reactant side of the equation and the product side of the equation. So for example, in our photosynthesis equation right here, we want there to be the same number of Cs on the reactant side as the product side. We want there to be the same number of O's on the reactant side and the product side. And we want there to be the same number of H's on the reactant side and on the product side. So the way that we try and make sure that we have all those same numbers is by changing our coefficients, changing these big numbers in the front of our molecules. So we're gonna, and we'll follow these following steps and I'll show you a couple examples of how to do this in order to balance a chemical equation. So you start off with the written out chemical equation and on the homework, you'll see that that's already been given to you. The first thing that we're gonna do is check for the atom balance. So C, all right, right off the bat, how many atoms do we have on each side? We're then gonna try to change those coefficients, those big numbers in order to make the equation balanced. So we're gonna try to make it so that we think there's the same number of C's, H's and O's on the reactant side and on the product side. And then we're gonna do a final check and see, did we get the correct balance? Did we end up with the same number of C's and C's or of O's and O's, so on and so forth. So I know you don't really know exactly what that means by me just talking about it. So I'm gonna take you kind of step-by-step step through an example to kind of show you what I mean by all these steps. So, here is our first chemical equation that we are going to try and balance. We have HGO and it is becoming HG and O2. So just for kind of background side point, this is called a decomposition reaction where we start off with one big molecule but then it gets broken down into smaller pieces. You don't really need to know that, but that's what's happening here. You start off with one piece, but then it breaks up into its individual parts. So we have to make sure that we have the same number 
of HGs and the same number of O's on either side of our equation. So that's the two atoms that we're dealing with. HG, which is the chemical symbol for mercury, and O, which is the chemical symbol for oxygen. So the first things first is we have to check and see how many of each atom we have in our equation. So to start off, we can look at our reactant side and we have one HG atom and one O atom on our reactant side. So for these examples, we're making like a little table down underneath. So we have one HG and one O atom on the reactants. If we look at our product side, we have one HG atom and our little subscript down here tells us that we have two O atoms. So that is our first step completed. We figured out that we have one HG and one O on the reactant side and one HG and two O's on the product side. So next up is we ask, is this equation balanced? No, unfortunately it is not balanced. We have one HG on the reactants and one HG on the products. That's good, those match, but uh-oh. We have one O in the reactants, but two O's in the products. That's not good, that's not gonna work. So we need to balance these O's. So one HG and one HG, that's good. One O and two O's, that's not good. We need those O's to be the same. So how are we going to fix this? Well, the only thing we can do, so I'll go ahead and tell you guys this right now because people always get a little bit confused by it. What we cannot do is mess with this little number right here. That guy is, think of it as permanent, as set in stone. We cannot do anything about the little two down here. So unfortunately, as easy as it would be, we can't just erase it and be like, all right, just scratch it out and done, back to one O. Does not work like that, unfortunately. We have to keep that two right there with that O. So the only thing we can do is change the big number that we put in the front of our atoms. So right now, even though it's not written in, we can think of essentially all of these atoms have a big number of like, there's an invisible one here at the front. So we have one HGO molecule and we have one HG atom and we have one O2 atom. So the only thing that we can do to try and balance this is make some of these numbers in front of these atoms bigger. So this two O's over here is different from this one O over here. So what I'm thinking is that if we add a two in front of our HGO molecule over here, we add a two to the reactants. So now instead of having one HGO molecule, we have two. HGO molecules. So the tricky thing about this is that this two does not just increase the number of O's that we have, it also increases the number of HG's. So since HG and O are bonded together, they're, I don't know if it's an ionic bond or a covalent bond, probably ionic because HG is metal, but they're bonded together so when we put this big two out in front of them, we end up with 
two HGs and two O's and their reactants. So before we had one and one, but in order to try to make our O's balanced, we added a two in the front here. So now we have two and two. So let's see if we're all balanced now. Our O's, we got two over here still, and we changed this one to having two. So that's good, we balanced our O's, which is what we tried to do, but, uh-oh, problem. We now have two HGs in the reactants, but there's still just one HG in the products. So that's unfortunate. We balanced our O's, but in the process, we caused our HGs to become unbalanced. So now we have to try and go in and fix our HGs and make them become balanced again. So what we can do is we can change this HG by having changing the coefficient in front to being a 2. Since this HG is by himself, 2 is the only thing that this HG changes. So now let's check again. We have two HGs on our reactant side, so that's good. We have two HGs on our product side. Okay, HGs are balanced, so add them one, check mark. What about our O's? We have two O's on the reactant side, and we have two O's on our product side. So HG is equal on both sides. O is equal on both sides. So now we have a fully balanced chemical equation. So our final answer is 2HGO becomes 2HG plus O2. That is the final form of our chemical equation. So just to review everything one more time, we started off by counting how many of each atoms that we had in our initial equation. We saw that our O's were unbalanced. We tried to balance that by adding a two in the reactants, but that caused our HGs to become unbalanced in the process. In order to fix that, we were able to go back over to our product side, add a two to our HG over here, and end up with now we have two HGs on either side, two O's on either side. So that means we have a fully balanced equation. Like I said, this is probably the trickiest thing that we'll talk about so far this term. And I promise we'll do a lot more examples of this to get you guys to be a little bit more comfortable. But does anybody have any questions right off the bat? Is there any you still don't understand how we got to it? Where did you get the two from? Which one? The one where you put in front of the HG. So... Like, what made you choose the number two? So I noticed that now on the... So initially, I saw that we had two O's on the products and one O on the reactants. And so I knew, because I've done a bunch of these, that I could change this O to becoming a two by adding a two to the coefficient out here, by changing this coefficient into a two. So I did that, and that did cause my O's to become balanced, which is what I was trying to do, but it changed my reactant HG. So now I had two HGs on the reactant side. So I said, okay, well, I have an extra HG on the reactants, I can't change this now because that would be called, 
that would cause my O's to become unbalanced. But could I do something on the product side to make the HGs become rebalanced again? So that's when I figured that I could change this HG to being 2HG. And when I did that, I found that now my HGs are balanced because I put this 2 here. And because of that initial change, my O's are now balanced as well. So that's where those twos came from, is the first two I put over here to make my reactant O's match my product O's. And then that caused my initial HG's to change. So I added a two on my product side to make my product HGs match with my new reactant side HGs. Okay, I get it now. Okay, so that is probably one of the trickier parts of balancing the equations is not just figuring out what is unbalanced, but also which number do you need in order to balance it? All right, great question, Fernando. Anybody else have any questions or feel totally lost? Have anything you want me to go over before we do some more examples of this? All right. So before we go on, there is one more thing that I want to mention. So kind of the first rule of changing coefficients that we saw in this example is that when you add a coefficient to the front of a molecule or a compound, it affects all of the atoms in that compound equally. So I can't come in here and put, even though I only need two O's, I can't come in here and put this two in between here. I can't have HG2O. That's not how it works. The HG and O are stuck together, so I can only put this 2 here at the front. The other important rule about changing the coefficients is that when you have a subscript, ooh, where's my, there we go. When you have a subscript, if you put a coefficient in front of that molecule, you don't add them together, but what you do is multiply. So if you have three O2 atoms, that means you have an OO pair over here, an OO pair over here, and an OO pair over here. So three sets of O2 molecules means we have a total of six O atoms. So three times two is six. Same thing with our H2O down there at the bottom. If we have four H2O molecules, then we have a total of eight H's because four times two is eight. I would go down here, but it keeps blocking the numbers down here. But four times the two that's down over here is eight. And then the four also applies to this O. So we have four oxygens. So whenever you have a coefficient at the front of your molecule and a subscript somewhere later on, the coefficient will multiply with the subscript in order to get that atom number. All right, so before we go on to the uh, homework, I wanted to show you one more example from the notes. And in order to do that, I'm actually going to set up a whiteboard. So 
that you guys can see me like kind of go through the process step by step. All right, bring that over there and then do this and do this and do this and do this. All right. So in our notes, we had that photosynthesis equation, right? Oops, I keep So we had carbon dioxide, which is CO2, and water, which is H2O, gives us glucose, which is a big boy, C6H12O6, and some oxygen molecules. So that is the base version of our photosynthesis equation. So if you remember from last class, we talked about how we have three main atoms, three different atoms in this photosynthesis equation. We have some Cs, we have some O's and we have some H's. So whenever you're looking at a chemical equation, the first thing I would recommend doing is figure out how many starting atoms do you have on each side. So remember we have our reactant side over here and our product side over here. So on our reactant side, we have one C, one, two, three O's. Don't want to forget this guy over here. So we have two in CO2 and one in H2O is three total and two total hydrogens. Over here on our product side, We've got six carbons, six, seven, eight oxygens. Oops, almost left that off. Six carbons, eight oxygens, and 12 hydrogens. So obviously, this is, to start off with, a very unbalanced equation. So I promise none of the equations that you guys are going to see in the homework are quite this complicated. But this, I'm hoping to show you kind of a lot of the basic steps that you'll need to take to solve some of the more simple ones, kind of all together in this bigger one. OK, so the first thing that we're going to do is try and figure out what do we even tackle first? What is all this stuff going on here? All three of these are unbalanced to start off with. So I don't know about you. I like to go in order when I can. So I'm going to start off trying to balance my carbons. So I have six carbons over here on this side, only the one in our CO2 molecule over here on this side. So I'm thinking that I'm going to put a little space here for where the coefficients for these atoms could go. I think on your homework, it gives you little boxes that you can fill in for the coefficients. 
So remember the coefficients, those big numbers are the only thing that we can change in our reactions. We can't change this two or this two or this 12 or this six, those guys are all set. So in order to make it be that I have six carbons on my reactant side, I'm just gonna put a big old six right here. So now I have six C's. So that's what I was trying to do, so that's good. And this gives me a total of six times two over here is 12. Plus, we don't forget about this guy over here. That's also something that students do a lot is that they forget that you can have multiple atoms and different molecules. So we have six times two is 12 O's right here. Plus the one over here is a total of 13 oxygens. So that helped with the C's. So our C's are now nice and balanced. So that's good. That's what we were trying to do. Uh, the O's and the H's could still use some work though. Um, so the O's seem kind of complicated, like eight and 13 aren't really numbers that go well together in my mind. So I'm gonna skip the O's for now and instead try to balance our H's because I think that'll be a little bit easier to do. So we have 12 H's in our product side. We have these two H's on our reactant side. So I know that I have to multiply something by two in order to make it into 12. And if I remember my elementary school math correctly, six times two will give us 12. So now, thanks to putting that six in front of this H2O, I have 12 H's which is what I was going for in the first place. And I have an additional six oxygens. So six times two is 12 oxygens, plus six more oxygens gives us 18 oxygens. All right, so now my C's are balanced, so that's nice. So our C's are balanced and equal, that's good. Our H's are balanced, which is what we are trying to do with that new coefficient there, so that's good. And our O's could use some more work. We're not quite there yet. So, I see over here that I have some O's that are by themselves and then some O's that are combined with all these other C's and H's. So I'm thinking, I don't wanna mess with our C number or our H number since they're all so nice. So I'm gonna try to balance this by just changing these O's over here. So we need 18 O's we get six of them from our O's that are in our glucose molecule over here. So that means that I need 12 more O's in order to make that 18 number. Well, I have O2 over here. So if I need 12 O's, I think I can do that by putting another six right here. So now we have six times two is 12 O's plus six more from these O's over here. 12 and six together gives us 18 O's on our product side. 
So it looks like everything is balanced, but I want to go through it one more time just to be sure. On our reactant side, we have six Cs, and that's it. And on our product side, we have six Cs. So our Cs are definitely balanced. We can say check there. On our reactant side with our O's, we have six times two is 12. Six more from over here. 12 and six give us 18 O's on the reactant side. And then over here on the products, we have six O's. Six times two is 12 O's from right here. So six plus 12 gives us 18 O's on the products. So that is fully balanced. Finally, our H's. This is the only set of H's we have up here. And six times two is a total of 12 H's right here. And on our product side, we already have 12 H's and this glucose. So that is balanced as well. So that is how we figure out our fully balanced photosynthesis equation. Six CO2 plus six H2O produces C6H12O6 plus 6O2. All right. So like I said, that is a little bit more complicated than most of the questions on your homework, but it hits at a lot of important things that you have to keep in mind as we go through some more examples. Mainly, remembering that this coefficient number is gonna apply to all of the atoms in our compound, that the coefficient, whenever it hits a subscript, it'll multiply. And to keep track of all of the atoms across all of the substances in our reaction, not just the one set that's in the one compound, but the fact that in order to balance the O's, we even have to make sure that these ones and these ones all add up to the same number as our reactant side. All right, I promise we'll go on to doing some of the homework questions next, but does anybody have any questions so far, or anything that you're still really confused or not sure about? Can you repeat on how you got the 18 on the the side, the first side? Sure. So on our reactant side, oh, nice. Oh, nice. So on our reactant side, we change the coefficients of CO2 and H2O. So this six and the O2 together give us 12 O's. So let me go on here again. So six times two means that in this compound, we have 12 oxygens. And then over here, six applies to this oxygen as well. We have six H2O molecules. So six H2s and six O's. And then 12 O's plus six O's gives us a total of 18. So these numbers right here represent the total number of that atom on our reactant side or our product side. So we have between the CO2, the 6CO2, and the 6H2O, we have a total of 18 O's on the reactant side.
Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Great question, Fernando. Thank you. Anybody else have any kind of similar questions? Any other confusion about where some of these numbers came from? All righty. So if not, then the next thing I'm going to do is together as a group, we are going to start working on the assignment for tonight. So I'm going to pull up my own version of it. Uh, let's see. Do, do, do. All right, but I'm going to ask for your guys' help as we move along. And so whenever I ask, feel free to either respond out loud or write the answer down in the chat. So our first question over here, let's see. Uh, all right, there we go. You come over here. So we have CA plus O2 gives us CAO. I'll, I'll leave the blanks for our coefficients. So CA plus blank O2 produces blank. A. Oh. So the first thing that we have to do, so our two different atoms are CA and O. So the first thing we have to do is do our first initial atom count. So how many CA atoms do we have on our reactant side. One? Yes, correct. One CA. And then how many O's do we have? One. So actually with our subscript down here, on the reactant side, we have a total of two O's. So one CA and two O's on our reactant side. What about on our product side? How many CA atoms do we have? What was the question? So on the product side over here, how many CA atoms do we have? Only one. Yep, only one. And, one and what about how many O atoms do we have? One. Correct. So we have one CA on either side. So that's a good start but we have two O's on the reactant side, but only one O on the product side. So we can't make this O any smaller. So what could we do on the product side? How could we change this coefficient right here in order to make our O's match? Put a two in front of it? That sounds like an excellent idea. So if we put a two in front of it, then we do get two O's, which is exactly what we were looking for. But now, how many CAs do we have on the product side? Two. Precisely. 
So we have two O's on the reactants and two O's on the products. That's good. But because we have put that two in the coefficient spot, now we have two CAs on the product side, but we still only have one CA on the reactant side. So what can we do with this reactant side CA in order to make it balance with our two products? Put a two in front of it. Oh, that also sounds like a great idea. So now we have two CAs. We got two. And hey, that looks pretty good to me. So I'm going to do just a quick final check here. We have two CAs on our Thank reactive you. side. And two CAs on our product side. So those guys are balanced. We have two O's on our reactant side and two O's on our product side. So those guys are balanced. So now we have a fully balanced chemical equation. Two Ca plus O2 gives us two CaO. All right. So that was an excellent example of sort of the basic steps on how to balance a chemical <laughs> equation. We figured out how many of each atom that we had. We balanced one of our molecules to try and make sure that we had the right oh, my number. Life and then we went back and balanced the other side in order to make everything equal, in order to get our CAs to match up and to get our O's to match up. All right. Everybody okay with that one? Anybody have any questions or concerns about how we got to our equation on this example? No, sir. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So if not, then we will move right along to the next example for the homework, which is N2 plus H2 gives us NH3. N2 plus H2 gives us N H three. All right. So first things first, just like we do with all of our other examples, we have to figure out our count for our starting number of atoms. So we have N's and we have H's. Those are our two atoms that are reacting with each other. So how many N's do we have on the reactant side? Two. Correct. And how many H's do we have on the reactant side? Two as well. Two as well, perfect. So that is our reactant side numbers. Now let's switch over to the product side. How many N's do we have in the products? One. Mm -hmm, exactly, just the one N. But how many H's do we have in the products? Three. Exactly. So in our reactants, we've got two N's and two H's. 
But in our product, we just have the single NH3 molecule, which means that we have one N and three H's. So we have two different atoms that are not balanced. Our N's are not balanced and our H's are not balanced. When I, when I have this problem, I usually look to see which one either looks closer or which one has kind of like the lowest numbers that we're working with. Because usually it's kind of easier to figure out the smaller numbers first and then move on to the bigger numbers. So with N, we have a one and a two. With H, we have a two and a three. So N's got the smaller numbers. So that's the one that I'm gonna try to start with first. Uh, we can't make this two any smaller unfortunately, because it's a subscript. And remember, we can never, ever, ever change the subscript. Those guys are permanently set where they're at. So that means that we have to do something over on our product side in order to get the ends to balance. So what can we do over on our products that will cause us to be balanced with our ends? Will you add two? Yes. If we make this coefficient right here a two, then now we have two ends. So now those guys are balanced, which is what we were looking for. But our H's are still not balanced and especially our H's really are not balanced because since we have two NH3 molecules, we not only got two N's, but how many H's do we now have? We don't have three anymore, I can tell you that much. Six. 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 Precisely. Now we've got six H's in our product side. That's still so you add a not balanced. So would you add a three in front of the H to make him balanced? Oh, ho, ho, somebody's on a roll. Exactly. So over here, we can see that our H's, we have an H2 over here, and we need to get to six. We know that this two has got to be multiplied by something. And if I recall my elementary school math again, we can do two times three will give us six. Which makes that one look balanced. So let's do a double check here and make sure we got everything correct. We have two ends over on our product reactant side and two ends on our product side. So those guys are balanced. We have three times two is six H's on our reactant side. And two times three is six H's on our product side. So those guys are balanced as well. So now we have a fully balanced chemical equation. N2 plus 3H2 gives us 2NH3. So that is our final fully balanced chemical equation. All right. Very good work on that one, guys. It sounds like some of you guys are starting to kind of pick it up a little bit. Does anybody have any questions about this example? Anybody a little bit unsure about where we got some of these numbers from? All righty. If not, then let's take a look at our 
next example here. All right, so we've got Cu2O. Cu2O. We have copper oxide is what that is. And if we add it to some carbon, that's just all by himself, then we get some copper all by itself. Oops, I should add a little space there. Is the first one a U or no? This is Cu two O plus C gives us Cu plus C O. Yeah. Here we go. Okay. So, just like before, first things first. We have some Cu molecules, atoms. We have some O atoms. And we have some regular C atoms. So we have copper, oxygen, and carbon. So, on our reactant side, how many total coppers do we have? Two. Two is correct. Just these two guys right here. Two coppers. How many oxygens do we have? One. One is also correct, just one oxygen right here. And then how many carbons do we have? One. Yep, also just the one. All right, what about on our reactant, or our product side, excuse me, how many CUs do we have over here? One. The question mm -hmm. again? So on the product side, we have one CU. And then on the product side, how many O's do we have? Two. Two is correct. And then finally, on the product side, how many C's do we have? One. One, precisely. So those are our starting numbers. Two CUs, one O and one C become one CU, one C and one or two O's. So our carbons start off being balanced. So that seems like a good start right there. But our Cu's and our O's are definitely not. We have two Cu's on our reactant side and one on our product side. And then we have one O on our product reactant side and two on our product side. So, since these guys are both like the same numbers, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and since they're first, I'm going to start with the CUs first. So we have two CUs on the reactants and one CU on the product. On our reactant side, we can't change that number at all because it's a subscript. So that guy is permanent. So what can we do to the CUs on our product side 
to make them be balanced with our reactants. So how could we make it so that we have two CUs on our product side, just like we have two CUs on our reactant side? Add a two. Add a two. Sounds good to me. Let's see if it works. So now we have two CU on our products. Okay, two CUs over here, two CUs over here. So those guys look balanced, cool. So now what about our oxygens? We have two on the product side and that's a permanent two, we can't change that. We have one on our re reactant side though. So how could we change our oxygens so that they are balanced between the reaction, the reactants and the products. One. So we already have one oxygen over here, but how can we make it so that we're balanced with the two oxygens on the other side? Oh, add two. Yeah, add a two. So if we want there to be two oxygens and we add a two over here, now we've got two oxygens on our reactant side. And two on the product side. So these guys are now equal. So that's good. But uh oh, when we added that two to the oxygen, that coefficient also applies to this copper right here. So now, instead of having two coppers on the reactants, how many do we have? Four. Four. Four, precisely. Two times two gives us four. So, uh-oh. This seems like a minor setback here. Our coppers are no longer balanced. So our carbons are now balanced and our oxygens are now balanced. And so I don't wanna do anything that's gonna mess up the balance of those. We have four coppers and the reactants. So is there anything that we could do in the products to have there be four coppers instead of two coppers? Can you change the two to a four so it could be four coppers? You sure can. So we put that two in there at first because that's what balanced it at first. But now we see that that might not be actually our final answer. So instead of having that two in there, because remember our coefficients, we are allowed to change. These are the numbers that we can change. The subscripts, the little guys down here, those guys are permanent, those are set, we can't do anything about those. But we can always change the coefficients if it helps us balance the reactions. So precisely, if we make this be four instead of two, now copper's balanced, that looks good. Ooh, nice. It looks like everything is balanced. I'm gonna do one more run through to make sure. So over here on the reactant side, 
we have two times two coppers gives us a total of four. And over here on the product side, we have four coppers gives us a total of four. So these guys are totally balanced. For our oxygens, over on the reactant side, we've got two oxygens. And over on the product side, we have the two oxygens that we started with. So those guys are totally balanced. And then for our Cs, we have the one C over here and the one C over here. Those guys never changed, so they are still balanced. So now we have a fully balanced chemical equation. Two Cu2O plus C gives us four Cu plus CO2. So that is our fully balanced chemical equation. We have the exact same number of coppers on both sides, the exact same number of oxygens on both sides, and the exact same number of carbons on both sides. And that is what makes it fully balanced. All right, does anybody have any final questions about our example that we just did here? All righty, guys. Well, hopefully you guys feel a little bit more comfortable with those kinds of equations now. Um, I wanted to hop back to the homework real quick. So those are the first three questions on the homework. Uh, the fourth one, we don't have enough time to get into. So you'll be responsible for doing one on your own. So on the homework, it's set up very similar to the kind of examples that we were just doing together, where we have the chemical equation. There's some blanks in the front where you can put the subscripts and then some spaces down here where you can write out the numbers on each side of the equation. So we did this first one. Write down the one. final equation. Oh my God. The what? The final equation, like the, the whole thing after it's solved. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah, so that's the main thing that you need to write in is what are the final numbers that go in here once the equation is solved. Okay. So whether or not you want to fill it out here on the Google Doc, or if you just want to write down your answers on a sheet of paper and send or text a picture of it to me, that's totally fine by me. Uh, like I said, there's only one that we didn't do in class. And so do your best to work on that one on your own and see if you can figure it out. Um, if you don't, it's totally fine. I'll still give you credit for trying, um, but just make sure to turn in your answers um, at some point. Obviously, since you guys are all here, you all have your attendance credit for today for being here in class, but this is still a grade, even though it's only a completion grade. So please do get it turned in and submitted to me when you get a chance. All righty guys, well that actually takes us to the very end of our time for a class today. Thank you guys for sticking with me and helping me along through there. I know this is some pretty tricky stuff, but it sounded like you were starting to get some of the steps there at the very end.
Um, as always, please reach out to me. You can text me, email me, leave a comment on the Google Classroom, and I will do my best to get back to you when I can. I hope you guys have a good rest of your Thursday, a good Friday, a good weekend, and I hope that I will see you back in class next Tuesday night. All right. Thank Everybody. you. Have a good night. Have a good one. Have a good night. Mm -hmm. You guys so, too. I have a question. Yes. Can I write all of the stuff and text it to you? Mm -hmm. That's totally fine. Okay. Um.